So we are live. Welcome, Kimberly, officially. She and I are alone, but I hope we'll be joined soon by others. At the week six live session, the last one for our course, I am hopeful, just by way of an editorial remark, that um, that you will see live sessions in future courses. You may not. Uh, you are always free to ask your instructor, you know, if you appreciate the experience that you're getting in this one, because this is a session for students to kind of make more of a connection than uh, just reading posting after posting can do. And I'm happy to do it. I, I enjoy interacting with students live. It takes me back to the classroom back in 1999, I think was the first time I really, the last time I taught in a classroom uh, for the University of Phoenix anyway. Anyway, I have our PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to uh, bring that up and I'm going to share and, and Angel joined us. Welcome Angel. I was hoping to see your name and you didn't disappoint. Glad to see you this evening. I was just going to say I'm going to share my desktop as I always do. So here we go. Please let me know when you see my desktop or when you see my PowerPoint presentation, excuse me. I got it. Great. I got it too. Okay, great. Well, here we go, ladies. Uh, we're going to uh, look about and look around and see who joins us. I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions about anything on your mind. We'll look at week six's objectives and they concern change management, something that we kind of touched on through all six weeks. Uh, we'll talk about the week six assignment, which I hope is pretty straightforward, and anything else that you care to discuss. So let's move on. There's your cheap photo of me and my, this is my Disneyland lanyard, okay, with Disney pins. Uh, I may not be as fanatic a Disney fan as some of you Starbucks customers are, but um, I do enjoy my time there, even at my advanced age. Okay, any preliminary questions I can answer for you? Or anything you'd like to discuss? We move on. So week six's objectives are, as you can see, assess change management and innovation. And um, assess, I'm not sure I like that word. I thought I like discuss better, but, but it is from the syllabus and that's what they gave me. I think I'll change it next time I teach this class. In any case, um, it is necessary to survive, I think, in business that you consider change to be an ever-present dynamic. And especially in those industries that depend on innovation uh, for their market share, you know, we, we just were treated just in the last week to the specter of Apple Incorporated being the first company in history with a valuation of one trillion dollars. That's, that's an incredible thing. Incredible. That's not only a lot of zeros. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of value. Um, and they live, and in the past, they kind of suffered uh, with the, the idea of innovation. When they were innovating and it was, they were making things that people loved, and they really changed uh, cellular phones with the iPhone. Um, it, some people like them, some people don't. I'm not here to argue that. I do have one. I am a fan. But their innovation is their strong point. And we went through discussing about Steve Jobs in, in, in week four, I think it was, and his 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 management technique of just concentrating on a few things rather than all kinds of things. But where that innovation is critical, 
and it's you know you've got to just have this change culture but even in in industries where it's not that critical innovation that is you have to understand that changes are coming um and that i i can just see so many examples of that i'm seeing it now i just saw a little blip about Mc, a new mcdonald's restaurant style i mean the style of the physical restaurant and it looks like an apple store so they are they are constantly trying to expand their customer base and i i have a lot of respect for for mcdonald's and what they've done over the years uh, examine factors affecting the manager's role in, cha in a changing business environment. Well, there are so many factors. Um, I think the workplace as demographics are, is changing a lot. Um, the women are employed uh, at a lot more frequency and a lot more um, examples of women in CEO positions, um, racial minorities has, has been expanding as well. Nationalities that, when, when I was working as a teen in, in the, the 1970s, didn't see many nationalities other than Americans in the workplace, at least in my small experience. And even later when I was in the Army, there were a few folks from who were not Americans, but by and large, um, it was very vast majority Americans. Well, some, some workplaces have folks who are a majority not Native Americans. And that's, that's, uh, that's something that would affect the manager's role. Manager will need to learn about those cultures from which these folks come. So he can be or she can be able to relate to them in ways that are meaningful and helpful. That's one factor. Um, we, we have a, a different economic outlook. We're in a boom economy, and we also have the implementation of tariffs in some industries and with some countries. That is going to change some of the policies of companies like auto companies um, who have been, you know, even the, the big three, Ford, GM, and Chrysler, have been making vehicles outside of the United States for many years. Many of the Ford models come from Mexico, for instance. Well, if there's tariffs on, on non-U.S. steel, some of that might make doing business in Mexico um, more expensive and more difficult a proposition, at least until things change. And there's that word, change again. So the economy, the, um, the policies of the current administration all those are, are going to be changing the business environment and um, let's see how many folks are with us I think we have more than two now yes who's with us Nancy welcome glad to have you with us I, Hello. I wanted to ask you ladies can you think of other factors um, in that would change a manager's role in in the business environment other than the ones I've mentioned Oh, come on. Sure you can. <laughs> well, I think... Uh, well, I know, like, with the... You were mentioning McDonald's before. I'm sorry. Um, I noticed that there, it was this... Um, they're encouraging that you can get, like, free fries on Fridays. And we couldn't really figure out why you would do that until the end of the year. And one of my coworkers and I kind of decided to research why. You, then the trick is you have to actually order through the application um, to get those uh, free fries. And the whole goal is to get more and more people to use this app for the free fries so that they can cut labor costs and it would be more like a drive up convenience. You won't be actually going in anymore or dealing with custom, um, not customers, uh, like customer service people, like, you know, actual cashiers. It would all be, a, and I'm wondering if something like that would change a manager's role, because if you don't have employees or an actual store to manage, I mean, what are you really doing as a manager? Well, and that's a really good example, and it puts me in mind of, of my shopping experience at Walmart, which I'm usually at about five days a week. Um, and I like going through the self-service kiosk 
to, to make my purchases. Well, there are some cashiers and there's, there's still lines, but um, yeah, I don't interact often with the Walmart staff like I used to. And I think you mentioned apps. Apps are, are really uh, expanding in their use as retail um, kiosks in themselves. And it's, it's kind of neat to see how some of this is shaking out. Walmart had their um, curbside, I, I, I don't remember the exact name, where you, you order online and they get, you, you park in a, a, a special space and they bring out your stuff to you. I wouldn't do that myself because I don't like bent cans and I want to make sure I see my produce before I buy it. But some people, it's a huge convenience, especially for people who might have mobility impairments. Um, yeah, so you ask what a manager is going to manage. Well, maybe they've got to be more technology savvy to be able to um, troubleshoot the apps and, and some of the issues involved with them. They will always have some measure of staff. Somebody has to clean the restrooms. Somebody has to flip the burgers. Somebody has to take the money or at least have that capability. Um, haven't heard about many businesses that are doing away with uh, acceptance of actual currency, but maybe they're out there. Other examples? Well, it's okay. This is not this is not a classroom per se. I just want to make sure that you understood the objectives and and I think that the examples we have, um, I think you can see that. And some of this is fairly easily apparent. Any further discussion questions about week six objectives? We will move on to the week six assignment. That Hewlett Packard case study analysis. And I brought it up. And uh, this is not in accordance with APA formula. There's no um, there's no title page. This is not double spaced. And so I'm going to mark Hewlett Packard down. I'm going to mark the university down for not putting an APA formatted um, scenario up for you. Anyway, this is what you'll have to read. It's a short read just a page and a little bit more. And then the questions are about that page and a half's worth of readings, but it's asking you to think critically about some of the things that Meg Whitman, as CEO of HP, uh, was up against and some of the changes she made and why and so forth. This is a very straightforward assignment. There's no other paper that goes with it. All I want for you to do is to type in your responses, save it, and post it. There's no need to put a title page or other APA formatting. I was being facetious. Any questions about the week six assignment? Yeah, I know it's, it's kind of a downhill thing in terms of closing out the classes with a little bit of a restful assignment, especially compared to some of the others. And I'm glad to see I that. I don't think we're complaining on that for the last week. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the earlier versions of this course had an ugly final exam that I had perhaps four, well, three, four hundred students take, um, and not one ever aced it. Not one. So it was 30 question, multiple choice, open book, obviously. But, uh, and it wasn't my creation, it was from the university course developers, but nobody aced it, so they got rid of it. And I didn't put in another one. So this is it. Any questions about the assignment? Very well. We'll go back to our presentation. And that's it, really. I didn't have anything else to share, but um, let me just say, you know, this is our last live session, and I've enjoyed all of them. And I do hope that you, if you've enjoyed them and you found them helpful, that you uh, make comments to that, um, that point in your course evaluation. 
Um, and because this is kind of a coming thing, I think that in time, uh, live sessions will be a feature of UOP online courses with kind of the same parameters. It's not something you have to do uh, because they have to keep the asynchronous nature of them, uh, folks getting on whenever they can. But I recommend that you, you know, if you wish, you can discuss it with your follow-on instructor for future courses. She or he may like the idea, uh, especially if you have found it helpful. So anything else for the good of the order? Well, ladies, I think it's just ladies. Yes, I thank you for joining me. But I'm not going to take up any more of your time. And Thank you. I bid you all a good evening, and I wish you all the best in your follow-on course. Does anybody know what their next course is going to be yet? Uh, mine's a human resource course, I believe. Human resource management. Great. Angel, do you know your follow-on course? I have like a three week break and then I have a psych course, which is my last course for my program. Yay! I know I'm so excited. Good for you. I don't know what mine is. I haven't even looked. <laughs> okay. Well, it'll be just as thrilling as this one and perhaps more so. All right, ladies. Well, I wish all of you a good evening and um, you know where I am if you have any further questions. Take okay, care. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank Professor. You. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop sharing and stop the recording.